Hello and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Sports. My name is Michael Raziel and today my incredible guest Juan Archuleta. He's getting ready for Bellator 246 on September 12th versus Patrick Mix. Juan, how you doing today, man? Uh, doing great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for, uh, you know, welcoming to me to the show. Pleasure is all mine. I promise you that. I got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Excited to get into it. But the first question I have for everybody on the For the Love of Sports podcast is, why do you love your sport so much? Man, my sport is just a, it's like a, a working class sport. You know, uh, you, you, you get what you, what you put into it, you know, as hard as you want to work is, is going to be your outcome. So sometimes it's self-promotion, working on uh, self-promoting yourself, making sure you have all angles covered. You don't have to be a master at one sport. You could be, you know, a journeyman in all of them and then put it all to, and be able to put it all together. So you're able to freely, um, you know, expose yourself to the world and, and to the world of martial arts and learn different sports. And uh, if you have ADD like I do, it's a perfect sport for you. There you go, man. You get to do a couple different things. I always thought it was really boring. You know, one having one of those nine to fives, I respect everyone that has to do it. You have to pay your bills, Absolutely. right? I'm not here to tell someone how to spend their life, but I really prefer jumping between a bunch of things because it's just so much more enjoyable that way, right? Like it's just, you yeah, get to do a yeah. bunch of stuff rather than one thing over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you get tired of boxing, you could get into wrestling. If you get tired of wrestling, you could jump in jujitsu. If you get tired of jujitsu, you could do kickboxing, Muay Thai. So, you know, there's constantly new angles to learn every day. I love it, man. And so how did you get into MMA? Was it a specific um, discipline that you got into and then realized that there is so much more to learn in, in the in the space? Yeah, so my dad, um, you know, I come, I'm one of seven. Uh, I come from a large family, six boys, one girl, a uh, girl being the youngest. You're so man, constantly, yeah, you have six, six boys running around the house, constantly fighting with each other. You know, my dad ended with wrestling uh, in, in his high school sports. He was a multi-athlete as well, like baseball, football, basketball, wrestling. And uh, he just loved wrestling and he got us into wrestling at an early age. Uh, I learned how to, I was on the mat before I learned how to walk. So, you know, I was um, the fourth, the fourth uh, or the fifth, I'm sorry, um, child. So, you know, uh, growing up watching my brothers wrestle, I wrestled since I could walk and then uh, went to Purdue. And then uh, afterwards got into work, I was in the electrical union and then, um, you know, I was like, you know what, this this just this nine to five just isn't me. The sun up to sundown construction. I still want to compete. And uh, my wife, she was like frustrated uh, with me constantly coming back and forth to work and like not happy. She's like, you need to do something. You know, you need to still compete, at least go wrestle or I'm telling you, get into MMA. You, you would love it. You'd be really good at it. So I was like, I don't know. And then uh, and then finally, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to fight. You know, so it's going to take a lot of dedication and sacrifice, but this is what I'm going to do. And then uh, got very fortunate um, to be able to get into MMA and, and take off running. I love that, man. I mean, that is that is a story right there, right? I mean, you have you have this nine to five electrical union. It's a good job, right? Like, again, yeah, those paychecks, yeah. you need the paychecks to pay your bills. But it sounds like that entrepreneurial spirit really did come out in you and saying, hey, you know, I'm willing to take a I'm willing to invest in myself. I'm willing to do this on my own because let's be honest, where's the electrical union going? Uh, it's still going to be there, right? If anything does yeah. go wrong. So you had this opportunity, you took it. I mean, how scary was that initial leap of faith? Yeah, I mean, I uh, for the first like seven fights uh, of my career, I was a uh, five and oh, and I, I had my first loss and my dad ridiculed me a lot. He's like, listen, like, you know, you're selling yourself short. You're working and you're 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 trying to train and be a professional athlete. You need to choose one or the other. And uh, at the time, uh, you know, I had my son and getting ready to have my daughter and and I still needed to support myself because fighting in the lower class or in the lower promotions, you don't, you make nothing but like five hundred to a thousand dollars a fight. And that's nothing, you know, but, uh, you know, so we we're penny pinching. And then uh, at the time. Joe Daddy Stevenson uh, got an MMA consultant job on a show called Kingdom. And uh, he's like, hey, I found a way that you could just train full time. And like, just all you have to do is focus on training. I was like, well, what does it consider me doing? And he's like, well, you'll be an extra on the show of, of the show called Kingdom. And uh, he was like, and then you can leave, leave work forever and just focus on training. Uh, and this was after a, a, a pivotal point in my career because I had just lost and we were looking to uh, sign different promotions and things like that. So it gave me an outlet to fully dive in and focus on MMA. 
What are the chances, man? I mean, I wanted to talk about the TV show, I thought, a little bit later. But, I mean, considering it's that big of a piece of your career, allowing you, as you said, to train full-time, you make some money on the show, and then it allows you again to then go and fight. I mean, how how does something like this happen? Because this is these stars are aligning really. I don't believe in coincidences. Let me just say that. But those yeah, stars align really well. Yeah, I mean, it was like uh, I was really considering leaving work, but – I was scared to make the leap of faith because, you know, I have a family to support. And uh, at this time, my living is very cheap. At the time, we moved into uh, my wife's uh, old house that she grew up in. And she was very, like, uh, nerve wracking about moving into that. She said, I grew up in the house. You know how it is. You know, she's like, I wanted something different. I said, listen, it's $575 a month to live there. Like, <laughs> we're not going to find that anywhere else. Like, not even having roommates, you know? And I was like, let's just bite the bullet. I promise you that uh, we will uh, redo the house. And uh, it was only a two bedroom, about like 800 square feet house. But um, I was like, listen, if I take this show, we're guaranteed $500 a month, or I mean a week, uh, being on the show for a background um, person. So, you know, and she was like, okay, well, let's do it then. And so we moved into the house, and then then it was off and running. Like, I was working down there uh, pretty much every day and uh, being a background. And after the first season, because um, Joe Daddy was an MMA consultant on there, and after the first season, uh, we finished the last episode and the writer of the show named Byron Belasco comes up to me and he's like, Hey, I, I think I know you. And I was like, no, nah, we never met. And then he was like, no, but I know you, like I know of you somehow. And I was like, I don't know, man. And then, uh, so we left, we left it at that. And then the next day we go and we're helping like pick up the show and like, you know, finish the final touches of everything. He's like, dude, it hits me. I, I know where I met you. And I was like, where? He's like, well, I didn't meet you. I just, I saw you fight and I was like, what? He's like, yeah, it's insane. Like, look at this footage I have on my phone. And it was my first fight ever in MMA. Oh, right. And uh, and it was crazy because uh, I was fighting a guy that was very well-rounded and he actually like flash knocked me out for a second and, and, and like the first minute of the fight. And I woke up on a single leg and I was like, oh man, like shake the cobwebs out. And then we just started scrapping like, you know, two Tasmanian devils and he's sitting in the middle of my family. My family's just like, you know, they're fight fans. They're like, uh, they're combat athlete fans. And so they're going crazy, like, come on, on. And so he's like living in the middle of this. And I'm like the first, first fight on the show. And he's like recording this, like, this is what I want my show to be like. This is how crazy I want it to be. And I end up winning a decision. And so he's showing me all this. And I was like, dude, that's insane. And he was like, yeah, he's like, dude, this gave me a lot of inspiration for my show. I'm glad like you came on the show and like, I'd like to know more about you. And then Joe Stevenson was like, Hey, I got a crazy idea since this was your first fight you went to. And, uh, you know, this is basically like no coincidence. This is like a match made in heaven. Like why don't Juan fight out of the gym called Navy street and he'll do it for the rest of his career. And he's like, would you do that? And I was like, dude, I would love to like, this makes sense. And so going forward it was just like he made me a character of the show and and i got to um really um dive in and 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 hang out with the with the with with um the actors frank gorillo nick jonas jonathan tucker matt laria and train with them and kind of learn a lot of um you know what it's like to have your own brand and ha uh, be self-efficient and promote yourself and from then on we signed with king of the cage and they kind of helped me line out my contract with them and it was like the 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 promoter uh the owner of, of king of the cage asked me like well what are you going to do for me and i was like look i'm very self-efficient i could promote myself and you know if you give me the opportunity to fight for four different weight classes and fight for four different titles i guarantee you i'll win it and he was like there's no way and, and he's like people have been trying to do that for my organization for a long time i said well i'm not just a regular person so a regular athlete and sure enough he, he uh as i won the first fight it was the first title at 155, then he gave me the 145, then he gave me the 160 title fight, and then he gave me the 135 title fight, and I won all four of them back to back to back, and then the next step was defending, and then self-promoting, and um, you know, just learning as I went on, and learning how to be um, self-sufficient and a self-promoter. What an incredible story, man. I mean, you were the inspiration for yeah. the TV show that you got onto and then were able to be and then fight out of that. Gym. I mean, that is, just, again, like, I don't believe in coincidences, man. I don't believe in luck. You clearly yeah. put in all the hard work. You put in all the energy, the effort, and Thank you got you, there man. and you deserved it, man. But that is just so cool. And then, you know, winning and then defending four titles 
uh, not by mistake yeah. either. That is pretty damn impressive. So again, Juan Archuleta yeah. looking ahead to Bellator 246 on September 12th. Very excited about that. And your last fight wasn't even in since January now. So you're almost off for nine months. Someone like yourself that, you know, you, human body craves contact. You want to get out there. You want to be in those situations. Obviously, there's a pandemic going on, so it's a little difficult. And you actually caught mm -hmm. COVID-19. But what is it like going nine months in fights? I mean, that has to just be difficult for someone like yourself. Yeah, because I'm a very active person. I like fighting five, six times a year because I'm constantly in the gym. And then uh, when January hit, I thought, OK, cool. This is going to be a year that we could stay active because, uh, um, you know, fighting with Bellator, it, it's a little more slower process with fighting maybe three times hopefully four uh, at the most, you know, but wanted to get in there more and fight six times, five, six times a year. And then uh, the pandemic hit us and we we're just like, oh man, like, you know, I was like, whatever, this is, this is just a virus. I'm not going to catch it. You know, I'm healthy. I'm, I don't believe in this, you know, like, you know, just that type of mind state. And then, uh, so I started getting bigger. I got up to like, uh, I was working out with Josh Rosen. And uh, so we were putting on a lot of size to like, kind of just rec recover the body because they were like, we're not going to fight for a while. So I had time to, you know, rest up and get strong and get big. And then uh, start, I started thinking like, man, I was an alternate go, uh, for the 145 tournament. And uh, I was like, well, it, sound, it, it seems like a lot of people are going to be well rested anyway and be healthy. I was like, so... I want to reach out to the promoter and see if I could fight at 135 for the title. And uh, they were like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we'll give you patchy mix. Uh, just be ready. You'll be the first fight um, coming in July. And I was like, damn, July. I was like, you can't make it August. And they're like, hey, you asked. And I was like, OK. And so I was cutting down from 185, start cutting down to the weight class down to 135, which is fine because uh, I have a great coach, Coach Cal Calavita out of the training lab, who you know, makes it a part of the whole process. And he's like, well, let's, let's do it. You know, we got to kind of, uh, have some urgencies. So we started cutting down and my immune system got compromised. I, I was like within striking way, range of making my weight class, but was, uh, compromised my immune system a little bit to do in such a short time. And, uh, you know, got COVID out of nowhere. And I was just like, Whoa, like woke up with fevers, uh, body aches, cold sweats, you know, uh, swollen throat, uh, chest pain, uh, thankfully didn't have no vi uh, uh, um, uh, um, vomiting or anything like that. Uh, so I was very fortunate on that case, but, uh, um, you know, but just definitely the chest pain and, you know, our, our recovery center we have at the training lab called O2 Health, Health Lab, they knew a doctor named Dr. Bennett uh, who was treating COVID and had success with COVID with the antibiotic. And so, um, you know, he treated me and within, I want to say four days, got rid of COVID out of my system. Wow. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate because it didn't affect my lungs too much. And then uh, so, uh, you know, um, being an athlete, we're worried because it's a respiratory virus. And I was very nervous and uh, about it affecting me uh for fighting because I'm that's my biggest asset is having a cardio and having a gas tank and uh, very thankful for Dr. Bennett and being able to treat me with his antibiotic and um, uh, uh, here I am today getting ready to fight September 12th the day before my birthday for my title fight now day before your birthday man I love that and yeah shout out Dr. Bennett that's incredible and that's one thing right like there's so many people obviously we know the virus does affect people with um pre-existing conditions and obviously folks that are a little older and it's unfortunate but as you said by cutting weight your your immune system is going to be compromised and that really puts you at a disadvantage and thankfully you are okay thankfully you don't have any respiratory um failure or, or respiratory problems it sounds like so you know cross your fingers everything sounds good there but with that you still were out for a little while with that you're still going to lose a little bit of that endurance you're still going to lose a little bit more of that um, maybe not grit, but you're still going to lose something from it. What has it been like since then? And how have you seen your training change at all? Or have you seen any compromises in what you've been doing since being, uh, you know, since recovering from COVID-19? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's what, that was my biggest fear. And so I, I, I stayed in my house, the 14 day recommended qu quarantine by all doctors. You know, I was like, even though I tested negative within five days, I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to chance other people. Like, I don't want to have that responsibility on my shoulders of, uh, people getting compromised with this, uh, COVID. So I sat out and then 
honestly, my body just regenerated because uh, I take a lot of amino acids and like, you know, pretty healthy for the most part, drink a lot of green juice. And then, uh, you know, our, like I said, my coach uh, and strength and conditioning nutritionist, he's world class. Like if, if he has a problem, he'll research it. So he found all the research on like vitamins to take, how to recover from it and things like that. And uh, I sat the 14 days and right when I got back the first week, I mean, I was I felt like I was back to normal. I was like, oh, wow, like even better, like in better shape. And I was just like, this is insane. You know, I still had, which was insane. Like athletes, they know their body very well. So when I spit, um, I had a white foam coating over my saliva, which was very strange. It almost looked like a dehydrated spit, but I wasn't dehydrated. I drink about two gallons of uh, fluids a day. And so it wasn't that I was dehydrated. It was just the the virus and it was a a, a, a strange uh, saliva spit you know documented everything because we're all learning about this virus together there's not one person that is a, a is a master at this virus so you know different problems for different people so you know that was one of the problems it took about i i said i'll say about a month and a half to get rid of that white phlegm that was coming up after workouts and things like that so um but now fully generated and fully recovered Happy to hear it, man. That's the way we want it to be. We want everyone to get you recovered from this thing. I mean, personally, I haven't gotten it. Thankfully, knock on wood. Oh, yeah. I don't know too many people that have. Uh, and I have heard, I mean, I'm, you know, in my late twenties, I know a couple guys that are my age that had to go to the hospital, have heart conditions from this. So it is. And, you know, I, I appreciate you being honest and saying, I oh, don't yeah. really think it's, I don't think it's a big deal. I think I'm going to be oh, fine. Yeah. Obviously someone like yourself, very fit, very in shape, but obviously it's something that can affect a lot of people. So I appreciate you coming out and telling the story here, man. Oh yeah. Well, and you know, we're all learning together and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're united. We're United States of America for a reason, you know, so we got to learn through this together and conquer this together. Like we all, we always do. I love that, man. I love it. It's a good message. It's a positive yeah. message. That's what we love to do. Spread a little positivity Absolutely. around here. And so going back to the fight again, up and again. So again, day before your birthday. So hopefully yeah. that doesn't adrenaline's already going to be pumping. Everyone knows it's going to be, uh, you know, your day. I mean, I, uh, I like to bet every once in a while and you always like to look at narratives, right? I want Mike mm -hmm. Chow to hit the home run on his birthday, that kind of thing. That's always oh, yeah. fun. So I'm not going to tell you who I'm going to put my money on, but I'm just going <laughs> to say that. But yeah. with, with getting ready for a fight like this, again, having such a long layoff you know understanding who patrick mix is as a fighter and what you need to do how do you prepare for fights and how again with this kind of just learning about it and saying hey it was supposed to be in july so you were getting ready and now it's getting pushed off how does that affect your training yeah uh you know again this goes back to giving all props i know i'm praising him a lot but coach calavita he makes sure that uh, he he records our recovery or uh, he's he's constantly on the ball for us like I'm a pro athlete and uh, a lot of MMA guys are like a lot of Neanderthal type of training. Like I've been there before. Wrestling's a Neanderthal uh, sport and it, it's you work through the pain no matter what. But um, here we, we track our recovery throughout the week, uh, daily, actually. And then, um, you know, proper nutrition, uh, staying away from fast food, junk food, breads, pasta, stuff that's going to compromise your immune system and inhibit it, your weight cut and cause um, autonomic uh, stress to your body and, and things like that. So we try to eliminate as much as possible. Uh, so he's constantly telling me, Hey, take this day off because you know, it, it looks like you're taking some damage. And, uh, the O2 health lab that we have here, it's a hyperbaric treatment. Um, you know, they have some blood flow, um, circulation that helps with healing. And one of the best things that they offer is called a Wavi brain. And, uh, what we do is we put it on our head and it, and it, um, computes the voltage that we have in our in, in our head like how much voltage mm -hmm. we're getting in our brain and uh in our reaction time as well um you know the, it, it has like a little menu and we listen and we every time we hear a different noise we we tap the mouse but so it, it has your reaction time and how long it takes for you to compute the reaction time so if you get rocked or hit uh, concussion protocols um it lets you know like like one time I got hit pretty hard when we were sparring, you know, it happens training. And uh, I was like, wow, I kind of feel loopy a little bit. And so we put it on and my voltage was down to like an eight, which is my baseline is a 13. So the voltage in my brain was about eight. So it wasn't a serious concussion because if it's a serious concussion, your voltage would be around a four. Uh, and so eight is about mid, mid, mid range where I did get rocked. And so they were like, Hey, let's do some hyperbaric treatment. Let's take off a of training. Let's recover you first. And so you don't take unnecessary or continued damage, you know? And so things like that is how we stay ahead of the game on making sure we're not overtrained for peak performance and we're getting ready for fights. You know, we see great success through it. 
it, and I think it is important, right? As you were saying, you know, that, that Neanderthal mindset, uh, your words, not mine, of course, and, yeah, and understanding, course. just go through the pain and, you know, Hey, you're fine. Get back out there. We used to see it in football, obviously all the time as well. It's like, you know, yeah. you know, concussion protocol is not a real thing, but as you're showing and as you're seeing, if you actually pay attention to that stuff, recover properly, you're going to get back to normal and then get better rather than just sitting there loopy, as you said, getting rocked again, and then potentially have that voltage go down more. So I think it's, it's great what you and your team are doing to make sure that you're healthy, but also also getting better at the same time yeah because it's nerve-wracking you know like i'm nervous taking those tests like i'm like i don't want to know what what mm -hmm. i have but at the end of the day we have stuff that's gonna help you you know like we're in a sport of course that you were causing self-infliction damage and so um but it also gives us to lets us do what we love and so uh you know with that being said you got to make sure you're taking the proper protocols that you know, I'd rather know right now and, and fix it instead of lingering problems going on and having CTE or having uh, troubles pronouncing words or saying my name or my kids' names and things like that. Like, I want to go home at the end of the day, make sure I could love and support my family at the same time and 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 use my money uh, later on in life to enjoy it with my family. You know, so it's like, what do I do? Stay nervous and say, I don't want to know about this. And, and then later on pay for it or say, OK, this is what happened. Let's address the problem. What supplements do I need to do to help my brain? And uh, what kind of protocols do I need to do? What do I need to sit out a week? OK, let's sit out a week and, you know, do this like it, money's not that important. But your overall health is, you know, you can't put a, a price tag on health. Exactly. It's the only thing, man. It's the only thing we got. You have to, you got your body, keep it, keep it the way you can as long as possible. And clearly yeah, doing a great job at that. So one thing that's going to be really interesting, especially again, we're talking to Juan Archuleta, Bellator 256 on September 12th, getting excited for that. And I'm sure you walk out there, you got the crowd screaming that adrenaline's pumping. You're getting ready to go. You're getting excited, but there's yeah. no crowds now, man. There's not yeah. going to be any crowds there. I mean, is this, I mean, you fought in gyms before, as you said, you spar all the time and you know what that's like. And yeah. we've seen it a little bit with the UFC. It's it's, it's weird. Some people really like it because you can kind of hear and you can feel the situation out a little bit more, at least from the television perspective. How are you looking at it? And with no crowds there, do you think that's going to affect you at all? Or do you think it's going to be better, worse, or, or is it just going to be neutral and you're, you're just going to go out there and do your thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, for the most part, uh, it's nerve wracking here in a crowd, you know, because you get the boos, you get the cheers, you get the oohs, the ahs. And um, sometimes you're trying to dictate a game plan. And uh, sometimes fans, they just want to see blood and, and, and knockouts and gory type fights. And so it deviates you from your game plan. Um, with no crowd, I mean, you're not hearing those boos or those ahs or sometimes like you you get rocked and everyone's like, oh, and you're like, oh, I got to get this back. And it, it brings you back right away. Or sometimes you're hearing boo and then you're just like, oh, I got to commit. And then you get cracked and you're like, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. So uh, I think it's going to be beneficial for you to be able to dictate a game plan. Uh, but likewise, you're going to be able to hear both sides of the corner, the screaming, the yelling, the excitement the anticipation the breathing like uh, the breathing patterns of your opponent and and so there's so much that goes into it you know and it's you're going to sit there and you're going to be able to execute your game plan but also see his game plan and it's and it makes it that much more of a, a, a of an intense fight because i've been there and uh, i was coaching some of my teammates um tim elliott in, in particular in a in a ufc fight with no fans and you know the time goes by so much slower you're just like if you look over at the clock, you're like, oh, man, there was only a minute that went by. It already seems like four minutes went by, you know, so you're just like the time is just like slowing down. And you're and, uh, you know, I was going to call out the time to him one time and uh, I was going to say, you still got two and a half minutes. But I was like, no, I'm not going to say it. And then the coach next to me said it. And I see Tim look over like, are you effing kidding me? Like, there's still two and a half minutes. Like, I've gone all out these last two and a half minutes. So, it, you know, it, it kind of brings a definitely a different dynamic and, uh, you know, slows things down a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's, again, it can be good. It can be bad for some guys. Like some people obviously really do feed off that crowd, that emotion. As you said, though, it will kind of deviate you from your strategy because you start hearing those those boos and those cheers and those oohs and those ahs. And that's really going to affect you whether you want to or not. Again, the adrenaline's pumping. You're ready. You hear that. You 
you're just ready to pounce. You're ready to go. And it sounds like you're taking a more um, level headed approach when thinking about this, because that strategy mm -hmm. can be even more specific. And I'm really excited to watch yeah. the fight coming up. And then your birthday, yeah. throw your birthday in the entire mix too, man. Oh, man. It's going to be a weekend, dude. I know, dude. It's going to be, it's going to be exciting. And then I got an elk hunt coming up as well. So on the Apache reservation, and then it's just like, man, all this stuff together, it's going to, it's going to be make for a good time going to make for a really good time and, and again we really appreciate you coming on Juan this has been fantastic and one last thing I do want to talk about we spoke about a little bit in the beginning is that self-promotion aspect right mm -hmm. like we know we know Bellator we know UFC we know what you guys and girls and your men and women go through to get your names out there you know it's that whole promotion of the fight it's getting angry at the guy whether you like him or not kind of yeah. thing how have you learned because I feel like that's not a skill like I'm sure you have some you know, innate ability to jab people back and forth with your words every once in a while, obviously your fist as well. But how do you really learn that self-promotion aspect and and find ways to get yourself out there more so that you do have more of these opportunities? Yeah, you got to, um, you know, for me, it was uh, being around Nick Jonas, Frank Garillo and and and, um, and Jonathan Tucker and these guys. But, um, you know, they uh, you know, sometimes you, you got to play a character. Uh, but at the same time, if you're playing someone that you're not, it's definitely, I'm not an actor, so it's definitely oh, hard to do. I don't know, man. You're on a TV show for a couple of years. You're more of an actor than me. <laughs> yeah, but to play that tough guy action is, is tough, you know? So I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be that person because I don't want my kids to, to I want to I wanna be the person that I want my kids to, um, you know, adore and to um, look up to, you know, not idolize, but to look up to and say, man, my dad never uh, changed his character or broke his character. And so you, you go out there and you study, you study, um, you know, from all across the board, basketball, football, um, politicians, uh, you know, uh, boxers, MMA fighters, you know, your peers and see how they act and see how they promote themselves and take a little bit of everything from there and and, and try to incorporate it into yourself. Um, I was very fortunate to have great role models in uh, my career and, and kind of like, uh, instead of doing things on my own and saying, okay, this is the way I want to do it and try to speed my process ahead. Um, I took a little bit of advice from everyone's like, hey, take your time, like make sure you're ready. So when you get into a big organization, you're ready to fight the top guys right away. And uh, that's kind of the, the plan that I went with. That way, no one was able to take it from me. And now constantly going out there and, uh, you know, we're fighting less and, uh, you know, with Bellator, we don't fight as much. So it's finding a supplemented income that could provide you uh, monthly income. So we do our research on uh, different type of sponsors or different type of um, uh, companies that we want to be represented by. You know, I was, I'm very fortunate to be represented, um, to represent Monster Energy, um, believing in me, taking the top level athletes and, uh, you know, being able to show showcase my personality and not change character. You know, I just signed with a company called the Dice Team, who, again, wants real life superheroes, uh, people that could, uh, you know, help out the youth and um someone that they look forward to being when they grow up in, in tough situations like if i just work out as hard as or put all my effort into something and 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 work for it then this is what's going to happen you know legacy builders they believed in uh, me since the beginning uh, they're a company out here that has believed in me and, and sponsored me from the beginning uh and financially helped me a lot uh, uh growing through mma and uh you know they've the guy married me, um, my wife and I, you know, so that's how much uh, we have a great relationship with Snyder Services. Same thing. You know, they they're great companies. So you find great companies that you want to represent and you want to, uh, you know, be involved with. Uh, and, 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 and it's a great uh, return for both both parties. Match made in heaven, man. This yeah. was absolutely fantastic. And shout out to you for all that. Obviously, again, you put in the work, you put in the time, you put in the effort, and you are very oh. well deserved of where you're at right now. So very excited and very grateful. Juan, where can everybody find you on the internet? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, reach out to me on uh, social media, JRCHMMA, my Twitter and um, and Instagram. I try to do my best to answer to all the fans. You know, I get a bunch of DMs and I'm always replying to them. And, uh, you know, that's who I fight for is my fans, you know, so I love them and I love being able to go out there and perform for them. That's why I work so damn hard. So when they tune in, they know they're going to get some action coming on. So, you know, I definitely want to give for the love of sports a huge shout out and your audience as well for tuning in and listening to what I have to say. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. We love and respect and appreciate the hell out of you and everything you do. Again, oh, Juan yeah. Archuleta, Bellator 246, September 12th against Patrick Mix. Juan, really appreciate your time today, man.
Yeah, thanks, Michael. I appreciate it as well.